Okay, this is Michael from NCY Store. We're going to show you how to simplify your fuel line and your vacuum line. So let me just remove, we just installed a, a harness for the, what do you call that? The horn. So that's not going to confuse you. I'm trying to straighten everything out here. You can see all the wires are neatly. Your carburetor, uh, your electronic fuel chokes right there. Naruku, we installed Naruku intake manifold. It's a pretty much a, I believe it's a 30 by 24. Uh, intake manifold with a 30 millimeter NCY carburetor. Here's how our fuel line is dried. It's going to the fuel inlet of the NCY carburetor. We attach, see it says indicator of flow from uh, fuel filter. And then we have a switch. Uh, we eliminate the petcock so we don't need a lot of the hose and it goes right into the bottom end of the fuel tank right there. And then from here on, if you look at where the Nuruku carburetor is, we pretty much, usually this is on the other side of the carburetor. It's like a vacuum since we don't have a petcock anymore that opens up by sucking the vacuum to open up the fuel lines to, for it to go through because we have a manual now. See, there's an on switch and off switch. We just hook the hose directly to the very top of the carburetor diaphragm. Normally it's on this side, but if you look at this side right here, it doesn't have one. So this is the only fuel line that we need. It's a non-EGR, since we also took out our EGR system. Uh, I recommend for off-road use only. So I, we live in California. You can see here, it has no EGR there. And then it's connected to it. We put a K&N filter. And since we don't have an air box, there's no other line needed to go to the air box. However, if you look at how we ran our vent system here, our positive crankcase ventilation, when the pistons is created, it creates a little bit of a fuel a vent ventilations coming through. It's coming lining up through, kind of looped it inside here. And then it's going right into our one passageway ventilation crank. And then on to the very top of the fuel tank. Now, a lot of people can do is they can tee it off here and then they can take the fumes extra and route it to their air filter. Since I have a paper one, I don't want to do any damage to uh, my K&N air filter. I left it alone. See here. Also, other uh, uh, things that we have added on to as well, since we're here. Uh, just kind of give you an overview real quick of the fuel lines before we go further. So you can actually see. I just can't stand when people show their video and they don't actually show you in detail of the ends that are much more important to you. Now, the fuel hose I clamped on this one, this is the size of hose I use. Kind of get you an idea here. Let's see if I still have it on here. Cover it. Okay, I might take it out already. Uh, but it's a pretty big, thick fuel hose, it's like one fourth. The fuel lines are a little bit thicker. And what's kind of funny is, see this crank ventilation? It's also a pretty thick hose. But when it comes to this one right here, it doesn't have a thick hose. So what we had to do was we silicone it so it's on there. But making sure that it doesn't close in. So you, what you want to do is you want to put the very tip all around this thick with silicone and then put your tube right through and let it sit for about maybe 48 hours. Sometimes 24 hours depending. And these ones fit fine. These ones use a smaller tube like 3 8 So don't quote me on the sizes. I'm not too sure yet. But I know these ones take a little smaller size. Um, this one right here, only the reason why we had to use a thicker size because the ventilation uh, crank for the valve was actually thicker. But these ones, also I took the thicker size one because you can see how big they are. And to this one right here, to one of the intake manifold ports. Uh, it's not an EGR again. And then, uh, let's see what else. And that's about it. That's pretty much your hose. Here's an overview of it so you can see. See there? That's pretty much simplify your hose. Again, you can tee this off from out after the output of one-way ventilation crank, you could tee it off and reroute it back to your air filter. Again, I didn't want to do that because it's my paper air filter. So that's how pretty much how to simplify your crankcase. Try to keep this section here under five minutes and we'll cover the other stuff uh, after this video. But yeah, I was thinking of maybe even putting another filter here and I have a tee off right here. Let's see here. So we use a tee off port like this right here. And we could tee it off and we could put that in here if you, if you want a little bit more ventilation for your uh, fuel tank but i'm gonna try to do it out and see how it works i know a lot of people block this off just because they don't want to leak fuel 
but I haven't had any problems with it. But I was thinking of doing it that way.